Okay, guys. It's Sunday Baroque time here at Zone 12. I will give music credit in the... What do you call that thing at the bottom? The description box. Yeah. This is actually take two. My first take was over 17 minutes. And for some... As my mother would say in her Polish Boston accent, for some unknown reason, there was a lag, a great lag between the audio and the video, so that by the time my 17 minutes was up, the video was running like it's 16. And I had no idea how to correct it, so I'm doing it again. Lucky, lucky you. Well, it's the end of my vacation week, and I've spent a lot of it working on myself, physically working on myself. I've been on the Migan massage table. I've been to a transformational breath session. I went to the chiropractor, and I went for conventional treatment, which was a shot in my knee, which I'm really not too thrilled about. But we try what we try, right? My, my rant for today and today I'm playing with a comb. I've been accused of clicking pens and shuffling papers. Today I'm, I'm playing with a comb. So let's see if I can stop doing that for a minute. My rant for today is about reading. On my Facebook, somebody shared me a horrible set of statistics that show that in this last year, on the average year, 80% of American households neither read nor buy a book, which means four out of five people you're passing on the street are not reading, or at least not reading sufficiently to learn things. This scared me. I grew up in a very bookish household. My, of course, I grew up in the, I can't say the pre-TV age, I grew up in the beginning of the TV age, but I grew up pre-digital, and my father always had books around. Always, always, always. And I grew up as one of these Amy Carter type people who would read at the table, and I still do to some extent, which is why I will not borrow books from friends of mine, because I know I'm going to get food on them. If I own a book, there's going to be a curry or a tomato stain on it somewhere within the first chapter. That's, that's a given. So, why am I talking about books today? Well, this statistic scared me. It did. Because it shows me that people are relying on media, relying on talk, relying on the digested version of the story to, to get their information from it. And this I find very disturbing. When I hear about a movie, I'd like to know the book it's based on and read the book first. And if you know anything about screenwriting, screenwriting involves adaptation. There's no way you can take a book and put it directly into a movie. I'm picking my nails up with the comb now. Think of a book as a beautiful ripe tomato and think of think of a movie as a packet of dried soup. What what's 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 happened there? Well, they've taken the essence of the book, they've taken the meat, they've taken the the raw idea edge of whatever compelled the person to write the book. And they've salted it, they've made it palatable, they've made it shelf stable, and they've made it profitable. Very few people, at least I would hope, very few people write a book with the intention of, I am going to make a percentage out of this and a shit ton of sequels. But that's what happens with movies. Now, that's not to say that movies don't have their place. There are many, many movies I I enjoy and a lot of them weren't weren't based on books uh, one comes to mind is Groundhog Day but something like that that's where the character the, the physical character say of Bill Murray would would drive the movie you don't really need to know his backstory you don't really need to know what he's thinking because his actions his actions are showing you what he's going through that's one of my favorite movies. And another, another fairly recent movie I like is Nebraska. Again, you don't need to know the backstory of the characters. You get little bits of the backstory. The protagonist, you get an idea that his father was a bastard. And that's leaking out slowly revealed, slowly revealed in the, in the movie. 
and his own struggle with, with alcohol. But that movie, the essence of it is in the bleakness of the landscape, the poverty of the, the crappy little... I thought at first he lived in a motel, a crappy little apartment the guy lives in, the, the beat up, crummy house his parents live in, the, the desolate, peeling landscape of America that they drive through. It's kind of funny also when you think of it that he didn't even want to bother to look at the, uh, if you remember the story, uh, he drives his father to, to go see uh, relatives and they don't even want to, he doesn't even want to stop at Mount, Rush, Mount Rushmore because that's an idealism that doesn't exist anymore in America. And I was also thinking of Blade Runner, something I want to see the sequel to. Now Blade Runner was based on Philip K. Dick book and in that book Deckard the protagonist is definitely shown not to be irreplicant but if you watch the movie there's a lot of questions stuck in there by the director what's going on there is Deckard a replicant are his memories BS are his memories implanted we don't know so that that changed that changed the the thought that changed the thoughts of the audience it changes the perspective of the whole story this is how screenwriting can, can change something. And then, then I'm thinking of Stephen King and The Shining. Now, The Shining, we know, was a horror story. But the horror story in The Shining is really in the horror inside Jack Torrance's head. If you know anything about Stephen King's personal life, and again, read his books. He has books. Dance Macabre, I think, is one of them. But several books in which he mentions his, his father's alcoholism, his father's erratic behavior, the, the fright, the uncertainty that a child had, that he had as, as a child with, with his father's demons. And so he took that book and he put his father's demons into Jack Torrance and it turned into a horror story about a haunted hotel in which the demons from the hotel went into Jack. But in the book, you see that Jack really didn't need that kind of extra, extra influence. He had his own pain. He had his own pain to work from. So where am I going with this read a book? Read a book, guys. Um, it's good for you. A book will show you the tomato that the soup came from. I'm not quite on eight minutes, and I think I'm going to stop here because I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to get too much off topic. Maybe I'll make a second video today and discuss other things I've been thinking about today, like my trip to the grocery store. But as, as John Waters said, you know, I don't fuck people who don't have books in their house because that shows that they're thinkers. And go to the library, guys. Go to the library. It's cool there. I'll be talking to you very shortly because I have more to say and I don't want to mess up this video. Thanks for listening.